Shalom and welcome to Jerusalem Studio. Since world powers reached a nuclear agreement with Iran in July of last year, in which the international community lifted its sanctions on the Islamic Republic in exchange for limiting its nuclear program, Israeli defense officials have voiced on several occasions a new strategic focus with contradicting statements on Israel's security challenges. To try and understand Israel's actual strategic focus and its course of handling the regional challenges at hand, uh, with us in the studio are Mr. Yoni Ben Menachem, former director and editor in chief of IBA News and researcher at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs. Welcome. I'd like also to welcome our TV7 analyst, Mr. Amir Oren. And I'd like also to welcome Mr. Gil Hoffman, a journalist uh, at the Jerusalem Post. Welcome, uh, Gil. And I'd like to start with a question to you, Mr. Oren, with regard to the uh, true strategic uh, uh, focus of Israel. We hear a lot about uh, the change from a second response uh, focus with uh, regard to uh, nuclear threats of uh, Iranian aspirations to a more uh, concrete uh, focus of uh, uh, first response and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, give us a little bit of an understanding what it actually is about. Um, we may uh, go in uh, later regarding uh, the process and the product of how Israel uh, goes about um, writing its uh, strategic doctrine. But uh, just for openers, the Iranian nuclear threat has been demoted from its top spot on the Israeli threat list. There is now uh, a 10 year window or perhaps uh, a bit uh, smaller, but for the next uh, foreseeable future, Israel has to keep an eye on what is happening in Iran, but does not have to do anything about it operationally, which leaves Israel in position to deal with the other threats around it and you know, in, in machines, in motors, engines, or other equipment, they talk about MTBF, mean time between failures. Mm -hmm. Israel's uh, aspiration is to have a mean time between fights, which will be longer, to delay as much as possible the next round against Hamas and Hezbollah, and um, again, we will look mm -hmm. more into it a bit later. Uh, Mr. Ben Menachem, when we're looking at uh, the various challenges or the statements we've heard over the past uh, few months, um, we hear on the one hand Defense Minister Moshe Yalon talking about the new threats uh, uh, coming from the north, from uh, uh, Hezbollah, from the Islamic State. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, you'll see uh, Cohen, who is the new head of the Mossad, talking still about the old threats from the nuclear uh, uh, aspirations of the Islamic Republic and how Iran is still the core problem of all regional instability. Uh, Gadi Eisenkot, on the other hand, also speaks more of specific threats uh, of uh, northern uh, uh, aspirations by Hezbollah, by uh, Iran's offshoots, if you will, in the northern front, as well as southern threats, whether it's uh, Wilayat Sina, the uh, Sinai district uh, in Egypt of the Islamic State, which has a foothold in northern Sinai and is strategically maneuvering in that area. Uh, how is every person actually stating all those very things, even though they all have a core uh, agreement on the core issue, which Iran has a hand in every single of those dangers, they still have varying uh, thoughts of who actually is the, the core dangers to the state of Israel. What can you tell us about that? I can, I can tell you that there are two major uh, dangers. Uh, one is Iran, which is connected and supporting Hezbollah and Hamas, and uh, now after the nuclear agreement with the, the superpowers, they will have more money. They will be able to support even more Hamas and Hezbollah, and we, see, we have to see how it's going to affect uh, what Hamas and Hezbollah are going to do. Uh, as you know, Hamas is now building uh, what they call the strategic, the new strategic weapons, which is the tunnels, and they put a lot of money in it, and they need the money from Iran to, to develop it. Uh, this is a very dangerous weapon for Israel. Uh, and also Hezbollah, we have to see, 
uh, how they're going to be supported by the Iranians. The other danger, as I said, there are two dangers. The other danger is not connected to Iran. And this is the, the danger of uh, ISIS, of the Islamic uh, State. But I think it's uh, less effective than uh, Hamas and uh, Hezbollah because they don't have the uh, thousands of rockets that can threaten Israel. They can... Uh, uh, do other things, other terror attacks, but it's not such a such a big danger uh, for Israel. Uh, and also in uh, in Sinai, north of Sinai, the Egyptian army is uh, fighting them. And uh, actually, the the more danger is in the Golan Heights. So uh, basically, uh, maybe Yossi Cohen is right uh, that the danger is still from Iran. It's not a nuclear danger now. Because, as my colleague Amir said, this is delayed uh, to a window. We have a window now between five to ten years, but uh, it's delayed. The problem is uh, the problem of uh, uh, the proxies of Iran, the Hezbollah and Hamas. This is the, the danger for Israel. Mr. Hoffman, when we're talking about uh, post-nuclear uh, agreement uh, between the P5 plus one and Iran, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council in Germany, uh, as opposed to the Iranian victory, if you will, in this uh, agreement where it uh, was able to garner a substantial income, uh, if you will, after years and years of sanctions which have crippled its economy, have brought it to lows, uh, its military was outdated, its uh, uh, regional aspirations were limited, even though it was... Uh, trying to have an active role also in supporting Hezbollah on the one hand and Hamas in the fronts with Israel, also the Houthi rebels in uh, Yemen, for instance, and uh, uh, currently also the Iraqi uh, military in uh, uh, Iraq fighting the Islamic State. All those organizations have had a very uh, limited support by Iran, also, of course, uh, Syrian President Bashar Assad, but now with this big amount of money coming in, about $150 billion, uh, uh, Iran suddenly has new opportunities, new uh, possibilities. Its foreign minister, uh, Jabad Zarif, has stated a few times on how significant uh, Iran is uh, searching new opportunities with regional neighbors, with so many problems. Where is Iran right now focusing? And is the strategic response of Israel to really, as uh, both uh, Yoni ben Menachem said and also uh, Amir Oren, is Iran really the main focus here or are there new threats coming out? Well, what's exciting is uh, that while the lion has been unleashed from the cage with these sanctions being removed from Iran, because of that, they have to be taking advantage of this financial opportunity uh, in order to serve their people or they'll be in trouble. Uh, there's uh, a lot of frustration among the Iranian people from all these years of sanctions. And then now that the sanctions are being removed, there's no crutch anymore for the Iranian regime. They have to help their people right now. Their people will not tolerate the money going only toward helping external forces like Hamas and Hezbollah and the Houthis. They, they want the people, uh, they, the people of Iran need to be helped by their government. And so that's where the focus has to be right now, which is a delicious irony because Netanyahu, he went to Washington, did everything possible to prevent this plan from, from being approved. And now we'll do everything possible to prevent it from being implemented. And yet, at least temporarily, it helps Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, it gets Iran focused elsewhere. Uh, Iran can't afford to be attacking Israel uh, via any of its proxies, Hamas, Hezbollah, or anyone else right now. And so because of that, this actually does give Israel a window of quiet. And that's why I'm not surprised by what Amir Oren said, which was fascinating, that, that Iran is not the, at the top of the list of Israel's strategic threats anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Oren, you have in front of you the Strategia uh, Tzahal in Hebrew, which means wow. the IDF strategy, uh, which is the official strategy by the IDF related to future endeavors, its focus. And, uh, of course, this is the... the uh, shorter version, which is censored by the IDF censor. Nonetheless, what can you tell us about the IDF's perspective of this? You know, one of the earliest uh, secretaries of defense um, in the Truman administration um, some 60 years ago, Robert Lovett, used to say that he who writes the paper has an advantage 
in the councils of state. And in Israel, the military write the paper. And this is because the political echelon shies away from putting in writing any doctrine, because any doctrine will signal both domestically as well as externally what Israel's true aspirations are. Does Israel want to keep the territories, all of the territories, part of the territories? Where is the border going to be? Many problems for a politician who doesn't want the world and the electorate to know exactly where he is headed, if he himself knows where he's headed, rather than maintaining the status quo. So the military always in Israel tries to instill from what they hear from the politicians, what uh, the, at least the current government in power uh, wants the military to do. And for the military right now, it's containment. It's a defensive strategy, even though it is employed by offensive methods. It is not preemption per se, even though Hamas uh, and Hezbollah and others are getting more and more rockets and are digging tunnels and are preparing for the next round, it does not mean that Israel is going to launch the first strike and preempt something which may be delayed for another year, another couple of years, because the Israeli Defense Forces aim is to let the Israeli society live in peace as much as possible. Perhaps there will be some clandestine activity, what they call the campaign uh, between the wars, but they want to deter, they want to contain, they want to be on the good side of the United States. This is one of the express aims. Mm -hmm. Which might be a mistake. Good relations, well, uh, they do not control the prime minister, <laughs> but, but uh, they know that this is one consideration which should always be uh, in the minds of Israeli decision makers, be they political or military. And um, they um, emphasize intelligence, air force, special forces. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ben Menachem. I basically think that uh, this doctrine or whatever strategy, whatever you call it, is uh, it's not uh, the Torah from Sinai, or the mountain of Sinai, right? And I think that the, the army has to think of, of other ways. And this strategy of containment and, uh, uh, and uh, letting people of Israel have quiet and so on, we, it might cost us a lot of problems in the future. Nonetheless, for, uh, in order to have a qualitative edge in the region, which is a quite chaotic region, purchases of weaponry is the key, uh, the key aspect mm -hmm. in maintaining that qualitative edge and uh, the strategy does move the IDF and the defense establishment as a whole in the direction of what to purchase as uh, was recently done yes, with but there, are, there are some dangers to Israel which do not, do not concern weapon for instance the the tunnels in, uh, in Gaza Strip uh, this is not a, a question of, of an Israeli advantage with weapons over Hamas this is uh, something new that Israel is not dealing with, and I think basically that what is needed is a preemptive strike on these tunnels and not to wait and not to contain the situation because in the future we will pay a very, we will pay a very high price once these uh, tunnels are, are ready and will be used against Israel. The, the price that Israel is going to pay uh, is going to be very, very, might be very painful and uh, might be a mistake as far as the uh, historical mistake or military mistake, a big one. And I think that sometimes this strategy should be needed and Israel should consider the preemptive strikes a strategy which uh, uh, have proven in the past that it's very effective and uh, uh, contributes a lot to the deterrence, mm. the power of deterrence of Israel. And I, don't, I think the military is, uh, is, is a little bit frozen is in his thinking because of he knows that the political echelon doesn't wants quiet and doesn't want anything uh, which is extreme or considered extreme. They want quiet. They want to to keep with this uh, situation as it is. And uh, this is why they're not even suggesting to the political echelon 
a new strategy. Nonetheless, um, uh, Mr. Hoffman, how do you view this on the one hand and on the other hand? In 1976, uh, the IDF was relayed to the uh, control or under the jurisdiction of the uh, defense minister. Uh, this has brought the IDF under the jurisdiction of the political echelons rather than under the generals uh, at the time and today as well. Uh, how do you view this dynamic on the one hand, and does this really, uh, as uh, Mr. Ben Menachem has put, change the strategy from a realist strategy to a more pragmatic, uh, trying to maintain uh, uh, public opinion to a certain degree uh, when uh, moving forward on that? Absolutely. In the end, it's all politics. Uh, I, I love what Amir Oren said about the paper, the, about the, it's the IDF that writes the paper. However, it's the prime minister who decides when to take that paper out of the drawer. Mm -hmm. And he needs to think of not only strategy and security, he has to think of his own political security. And so he has a very different image around the world than he does here. Around the world, he has this image of being tough, of being a hardliner, uh, of being so right-wing. Whereas in Israel, he's seen as being... a uh, not perhaps even spineless. There's someone who, who changes his mind all the time based on public opinion, someone who's not so right wing, um, who's changed his mind on the key issues that he's cared about his entire political career, who, who's released more prisoners. Survival. Yeah, because of his own political survival. He's released more terrorists from prison than any human being alive, even after writing uh, that that's the worst thing you can do. He's in favor of a Palestinian state, even though he said for many years that that would be dangerous for Israel. So uh, when it comes to declaring war, he only does it when his back is against the wall, when Hamas has already fired dozens of rockets the same day, and he has no choice because of Israeli public opinion. He doesn't have the, this great courage that perhaps a Truman did back then. I uh, would like to hear your response on this, Mr. Owen, but at the same time also I have spoken to some uh, defense experts uh, that have been around for quite some time now in Israel, and uh, they have uh, pointed out something very interesting with regard to the last Gaza, uh, Gaza conflict. In uh, uh, the Gaza Strip, the IDF has bombed more targets, or not more targets, but bombed more times and has conducted more sorties than all the wars of Israel together as a signal to the region trying to deter, as you put out, the deterrence is one of the key factors in Israel's strategy. How does that play out currently? And also the response with regard to what we heard both from Hoffman and Mr. Ben Menachem. Indeed, uh, the uh, campaigns uh, that you see um, in Gaza um, or against Gaza, across from, from uh, Israel, uh, by uh, precision uh, weaponry and sometimes by ground maneuver. Every two years or so you have such a campaign. And the um, modest goal of the campaign is to put off the next campaign for as long as possible. No one is trying to occupy all of Gaza and then feed almost 2 million Palestinians and be in charge of their welfare. Nobody is trying to decimate Hamas because who knows who will be there, perhaps the Islamic State. So the modest uh, aim of the Israeli government, and the Israeli government uh, right now is personified by Netanyahu, while the generals have changed um, over the last uh, six years, three different uh, chiefs of staff of the uh, IDF, but nevertheless, they know that they are not going to be tasked with an all-out uh, campaign. Uh, I uh, disagree with Yoni Ben Menachem regarding the military being frozen. The military is relatively innovative. They have to work with what is given them, resources-wise, as well as equipment and manpower. And they have their priorities. If they think that they uh, had better put the money in cyber right now, and less so in all the systems, this is uh, uh, what they are uh, trying to do. And uh, they are not trying to dictate to the political echelon what Israel's aims uh, should be. Uh, Israel's main problem emanates from, emanates from uh, the uh, West Bank, from the fact that Israel is uh, holding um, some 4 million Palestinians under occupation uh, while the peace process uh, stalls. The military has nothing to say about it. Uh, it has to keep security both for Israel proper and for the settlers or whoever is uh, traveling the roads there. 
And um, what the military is trying to do is to keep these local conflicts from escalating into a region-wide conflagration. Mm -hmm. What I meant meant is that uh, the the, the military sometimes is frozen in in the the way of thinking. I'll give an example. In 1967, Israel made a preemptive strike on the Egyptian uh, uh, airfields, and we uh, destroyed all the airplanes that were there to uh, attack Israel. This was a big success, and uh, that's what I'm saying, that the army is not just suggesting any preemptive strikes. Uh, every, everyone do not have to be a military expert to know that these tunnels in Gaza are a strategic threat to Israel, and what is needed is to demolish them immediately, mm-hmm. and not to wait for another war that will start, and then when the walls will start, then we will do, we'll deal with these uh, tunnels, because Hamas is going to make the first move, and they're going to surprise Israel and give a preemptive strike from their side to Israel, and we will pay a big price for that. Nonetheless, we hear from uh, Mr. Hoffman regarding the uh, public opinion on the matter on the one hand, and on the other hand, I mean, the tunnels is not a new thing. It happened from the days of Bal Kochva, if you will, until uh, today. It's and not a new thing, but has it's, been it's becoming studied. a strategic danger. And yes, but it has been studied for quite some time by various military academies all over the world, as well here in Israel, and there have been some signals by various officials in the defense establishment of having an answer for this. Nonetheless, this answer has not been this answer, backed. So it might take a year or a year and a half, and by then, what will happen? Mm-hmm. Some, one day, it's only a matter of a, of a military or political decision in, in Hamas. When, if they decide, and they want to do that, and I'm following this matter, if they want to give a preemptive strike to Israel, uh, and they will initiate this attack, then we will be in a big trouble. Mr. Hoffman, how do you view this? Uh, the tunnels are, as Yoni says, a, a tremendous strategic threat. The people of the South are outraged. They hear noises underneath their homes. They're terrified. And this is an issue that Netanyahu's political opponents are going to use against him. We've already heard Naftali Bennett take it as his cause in attacking Netanyahu from the right. Uh, the uh, Labor Party also, the, these are uh, kibbutzim and moshavim, uh, agricultural communities that uh, vote for their party. And so th- these are the constituents of, of Isaac Herzog. And he intends to continue to make this more of an issue. This is something that can embarrass Netanyahu. And yet it's, it's, it's not only, sorry, it's please. not only uh, Bennett who is saying that, even Itzhak Herzog yeah. is saying. He just this, was noting yes, that. And, yeah. and, 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 and you forgot Lieberman also. So the, if you look at the picture, there's a, some sort of a consensus mm-hmm. from the left and from even the left or the center and the right wing that this ha- problem has to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. Netanyahu is not doing anything. Last and, sentence on this. Netanyahu has to, for his own good, be uh, creative and preemptive, and perhaps the sign from Eisenkot, the chief of staff of the army, that, that something is being done, but he can't say, perhaps something is already being done. We can only hope and pray that he's right. Mm, there have been some signals on the matter, uh, Mr. Yeah, Lohan. well, there is no consensus here, uh, <laughs> at least. Um, That's good. To my mind, the tunnels are not a strategic threat. There will be no invasion, uh, perhaps a raid or two by um, a few dozen um, as uh, uh, Netanyahu said, commandos, call them commandos, uh, Hamas uh, uh, people who will try to infiltrate, and they will try to infiltrate because defense is so uh, effective. There used to be a time when uh, terror squads uh, freely came over the border, either from Lebanon or from Gaza, because there was no fence. Right now, they may try to come uh, from underneath, but this is no big deal. Of course, the, uh, the people who live there are uh, rightfully concerned, but they will be evacuated once there will be real danger for the duration of the campaign. There is no sense in preempting. Uh, yes, there is some technological um, response being prepared. This is on the defensive side. You have to locate the tunnels and then destroy them. And perhaps it is not coincidental that several tunnels have collapsed recently. Israel would rather do it unofficially without uh, taking credit for it because it doesn't want to push the more militant elements within Hamas to to try 
uh, to, to restart uh, a country. Another uh, big strategic uh, uh, aspect which is not touched enough, uh, in my opinion, of course, uh, uh, is the Islamic State, uh, the ideology behind the Islamic State and how to deal with this. Uh, Defense Minister Moshe Yalon has just recently discussed this in the Munich conference, uh, the security conference regarding the dangers of the Islamic State and its uh, maneuvering in the region. How do you view this uh, just in a couple of sentences, Mr. Owen? It's only a derivative regarding Israel. Israel uh, is not the main target or even one of the main targets of the Islamic State. And the Islamic State uh, up to now has not been uh, such a danger to Israel. It could cause some chain reaction if it threatens the existence of the current regime in Jordan. Mm -hmm. Jordan is Israel's most important neighbor to the east. And if uh, it is threatened, Israel will surely intervene against the Islamic State and for the... That's Hashemite actually people. very interesting. Uh, the King of Jordan, uh, King Abdullah, has actually spoken about this as well in the conference in Munich, uh, where he actually said that one of the dangers in the stalemate of the peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians was the danger that the Palestinians might adopt uh, Islamic State ideology. Uh, Mr. Ben Menachem, how do you view that? I think that uh, some of the Palestinians are holding, like Hamas, for instance, are, 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 are holding already the, the ideology of, uh, of ISIS. So uh, this is the uh, same ideology of the uh, extreme Islam. Uh, I think that the Jordanians are doing very well in fighting ISIS, and uh, they've been very successful in preventing them from going into Jordan. Uh, and we have to, to keep our good ties with Jordan so that... Uh, they will have the incentive to fight uh, mm -hmm. ISIS and, uh, and we'll support them in any way that we can. But uh, the, the big the danger for Israel, as I said, is uh, mostly Hezbollah and then Hamas and not ISIS. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Hoffman, last sentence on the matter Last sentence you. on ISIS is the per perhaps the world should be thanking Israel because ISIS controls an area of Syria called Deir el-Azur where there was a nuclear reactor until 2007. And according to foreign sources, Israel destroyed that nuclear reactor. So Israel has prevented ISIS from getting a nuclear weapon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to hold my breath that the world will thank us for it, but perhaps they should. Well, it's not any more foreign sources, I think, that uh, Prime Minister at the time, who currently resides in prison, has specified <laughs> that uh, matter. Uh, Mr. Oren, last sentence from you on the matter of strategics. Uh, uh, by the IDF and Israel's defense establishment. It's very easy to be pessimistic and concerned uh, and say that the, the sky is falling. But actually, it's a time of opportunity. It begs for leadership. The uh, military can write the papers. They can present recommendations and options. But eventually, you must have political leaders who will push for Israel to get back this, into the... This is all the time that we have for today. Unfortunately, Mr. Yoni Ben Menachem, thank you so very much for being here. Mr. Amir Oren, it's been a pleasure thank and you. very informative. Thank you very much. I'd like also to thank you, Gil Hoffman, for being here. And I'd like to thank our viewers. And we will see you next week. You just watched Jerusalem Studio. If you were enriched by the program, please consider supporting Evan TV7 Jerusalem. Call us at 0600 10077 or send your donation using the bank account reference number on the screen. You can also donate via PayPal. Jerusalem Studio is made possible by your donation.